Hey, come here, let me tell you guys something. In this box, I have a huge 14.4 inch Tesla type screen that I'm gonna put in my F-150. This one might be the best one out there. There's a bunch, and I'm gonna show you why this infotainment system here is the best one yet. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Long time subscribers, welcome back, you know the drill. Well, today's a little bit of a different video. You know I'm used to doing DIY videos around the house, but I've been working on something and trying to get a new updated stereo for my F-150. So I figured, why not do a DIY video about how to change my radio? You've probably seen a lot of Android uh, tablet style replacement radios all over the internet. And I've been considering changing mine for a long time. But like many people, I'm plagued with the same scenario that a lot of Ford users are and a lot of Ford drivers are plagued with the same thing. The dreaded sync system. So what typically happens is a lot of these systems when they when you try to replace them on your Ford, you know, your Ford series, your Ford F-150, F-250, F-350, whatever it may be. The problem is you usually lose the Sync 3 capabilities and functionalities. And I didn't really want to give that up. I wanted it to be able to still have a bunch of the stock stuff that came with it. Um, so I've been holding out and holding out. And finally, I ran across this company called AutoTech Pro, not sponsored by them, and they're not paying me for this. I just found their Tesla style radio and it works with the existing and retains all the old sync functionality, but it gives you the Android style, Tesla style screen in your F-150. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to install it. I'll do a quick unboxing, show you all the parts, then I'll do the install, and then I'll give you a quick rundown of how it works in the car or how it works in the truck and all the things that you can expect. I'll probably do a video later after I've had it for a while to show you how it's holding up and all the cool features that I've you know, found out because I'm not gonna be able to go through all the features in this one video. I'm just gonna give you a quick recap on how it's working and uh, give you a quick recap on the functionality. Let's do a quick unboxing and I'll show you all the parts that come with this Tesla style radio. As usual, of course, I'm gonna leave timestamps down below so you guys can skip from part to part depending on what you wanna see. And I'll leave links in the description as always for all the tools and stuff that I'm using in the video. I'll also leave a link to the new radio and where you can get it. All right, so I've unboxed all the stuff here and this is the 14.4 inch screen from AutoTech Pro. And this is for the Ford F-150. And I have the Sync 3 series with the eight inch uh, stock screen. And as you can see here, this thing is a beast. So as we look through the box, there's a bunch of stuff that comes in the box. And I'm just gonna kind of run through it real quickly and show you guys uh, the front of the screen and all these components. And then I'll flip over the screen and I'll show you pretty much where everything goes. So first of all, we'll start from the top here and you can see here, this is a trim plate if you have the manual function um, climate controls. I have the auto climate controls, so it's already attached to the screen, so I'm just gonna use this. Uh, here we have some extra buttons that replace your traction control or your emergency uh, signal or your flashers that are gonna go on the top side of the screen up here. they are holes you can't see right now, but the slots are available to replace the one that's on your stock screen. And they also send some uh, replacement screws here. Uh, these are gonna be used on the back of the screen. When we transfer the circuit board from the climate controls on the stock uh, radio. Here we have a little speaker. They actually call it a little speaker. I don't know what that's for. I'm pretty sure it's for the integrated GPS. The, I, guess the, I guess when they're speaking or whatever it is, this is what outputs the audio. I'm probably not gonna use it, but that's what this is for. Again, you have a microphone here and this is for your Bluetooth connectivity however this screen does integrate with the factory so I don't need to use this so I probably won't be running this as well here we have our GPS antenna I will probably put it in and this is for the stock radios GPS that they have integrated with theirs if you want to use theirs this is what you're going to need this is going to be our LVDS uh, patch cable which is going to patch from our radio to our sync module once we put it in. This is your 4G antenna. So if you do decide to go with a SIM card, you're gonna to need to mount these antennas. I'll probably run these and I'll show you where I'm gonna put this when I, when I, once I get to that part of the video. This is the cable for our SIM card. Your SIM card actually goes in here, so that's where you put your SIM card in if you decide to use 4G connectivity. Here is your audio cables. This is for auxiliary audio and this is your microphone where you'd plug in your microphone for 
your Bluetooth, this one, but I'm not going to put it in. This is your two USB connectors that you're probably going to want to mount somewhere. I'm probably going to put it in my glove compartment. This is your main cable. Um, this is going to connect to your factory cable and also connect to the new radio here. And again, these also connect to the new radio. I'll go over that when I flip this thing over. And this is your CAN bus module. I think this does all the interface and talking between the SYNC 3 and the new radio. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, I know it's a lot of stuff, but let me flip this over and I'll show you what it looks like on the back. All right, on the back of the radio, let me walk through a little bit of all the connectors that you see here. This is where you're gonna connect this GPS antenna. The first slot here is where you're gonna connect your SIM card. Here is where you're gonna connect your uh, audio cables. This one here is where you're gonna connect the factory harness. I believe this cable connects there. Here's where you're gonna connect the cable from your main harness. I believe it's this one here. This one here is where you're gonna connect your USB cable, which is this one. And this one here is for this little speaker. And this one here, these two are gonna be for your 4G antenna. And here is where you're gonna put the input from your LVDS cable. Also on the back here, you can see, this is where your factory climate controls are gonna plug in. Once we transfer the circuit board from our car to underneath this panel here, our factory climate control plugs are gonna plug into this thing here. Let me see if I can also show you up top here. Here, and of course, up top is where you're gonna transfer your buttons for the traction control or whichever ones you have. And of course, if all your buttons aren't filled from what's inside your truck, they do provide blanks that you can put to cover up the respective holes. All right, now that you see what's going on in here, let's go ahead and jump into the truck and start taking things apart so we can put this bad boy in. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the radio, but the first thing we gotta do is we gotta remove the cover for the speaker here first. All it is is held on by four clips here. So you just get yourself a pry tool and work yourself under here. That's it. You got the clips here. You can set that aside. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove two screws here. They're held in place by seven millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and remove the screws. So you got your screws removed. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna remove this tray. It's held in by two clips here. So what you wanna do is get yourself a pry tool again and just pry it up. Once you have this removed, you can go ahead and set the tray aside. Um, the speaker is connected with a wire, but you don't have to disconnect it. You can always just set the tr turn the tray and set it aside. Make sure you don't crimp this wire or pinch it. Just leave it to the side. Next, you wanna remove two seven millimeter bolts on top here as well. Loosen those, remove them. Be careful not to lose them. Just set it aside somewhere safe. Now we can go ahead and remove this. There are clips along the side here that are holding it in place. You just need to pry forward on the radio. Taking your time. If you have a pry tool, you can go ahead and use it to assist you. Just be careful not to scrape your dash. And that's it. Now you have the radio removed. We can go ahead and start disconnecting the wires. The only thing connected to the screen now are the wires connected to the buttons on the face of your radio and the climate control. Just disconnect these cables and you're done. Now we got six more um, seven millimeter screws on the side of the, the head unit here. We wanna go ahead and remove those. Be careful, you don't want them to drop and lose them. All right, now once you've taken out the screen, the last set of cables are your main wiring harness, your LVMS cable, your GPS cable, and your USB cable. Once you've disconnected all of these cables, you're pretty much done. We can take this thing to the bench and start putting it all together. All right, once we got our, this is our factory unit, and this is gonna be our new unit. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna start transferring, removing some stuff from the old unit. And what we wanna do is we wanna take off our buttons. You wanna remove these uh, clips from here, and we're gonna transfer them to the clips on this one here. And once we take out our buttons here, we'll set them aside because we'll use them later on, I'll show you. And then we wanna remove the screws from this cover here, showing our circuit board, and we're gonna transfer the circuit board from here, or we're gonna transfer our climate controls from here over to here, 
and then we'll put it all back together and then we can go back into the truck. So I'll walk you through it step by step. First, we want to remove the buttons here and they basically push out. You squeeze the tabs on the side very gently and you just push them through. You can set those aside. We're going to use them later. And then you want to remove these orange tabs here. Just be gentle with them because you don't want to break the clips. And I just transfer them one at a time from one to the next. All right, you want to be careful with them because these things tend to fly off. So take your time when you're removing them. You don't want to lose them. In order to prep for the removal of the circuit board here, we want to go ahead and remove the screws. There are two screws holding here, two Phillips screws. We can go ahead and remove the cover for the new radio. Next, you want to go ahead and remove these screws around here. They're actually T8 screws, so you can go ahead and remove them. Once you have all the screws removed, you can go ahead and lift the cover off. And this will re reveal the circuit board that we need to work on here. The aim of this is what we're trying to do is we want to transfer all these circuit boards from here to here, retaining the factory buttons on the bottom for the auto climate control and the top buttons here for the radio functions. We're not going to use those buttons and I'll show you about that. Again, we have screws all the way around here. They're very similar to these, but they're shorter. So be careful, make sure you separate them. Take your time with this process because you don't want to uh, scratch the board or do anything that could damage the circuit board. So just take your time and remove the screws. Uh, it's a, quite a bit amount, quite a bit of screws, but it's no big deal. Um, just take your time, you'll get it. All right, once you have all the screws removed, make sure you put them somewhere safe and you can go ahead and remove the circuit board here and you can flip it over to see what I'm talking about. Now here, we're gonna use all these same buttons here for the uh, climate control, but we won't use the ones up here for the radio control. So what we can do is go ahead and remove this and leave it with the factory radio. Now what I wanna do next is, let's put this to the side somewhere safe real quick. And then we wanna transfer our buttons from our climate controls from this side to this side. Now they're oriented the same and everything is the same. You just want to transfer everything from one to the other. Starting with the left button first, the left knob first. We'll go ahead and remove it. Remove the light. It falls into place on this side. It lines up exactly. And then we can drop our button in and it all lines up exactly the same as it did before. Plug and play. Then we'll do the other knob. We'll take it off. Take out our light, and again, our button should just fall into place, and it should all line up perfectly. Last but not least, we'll take our buttons, move them from one side, move them to the next side, just make sure everything is sitting in there nice and snug. Now we can bring our circuit board back over. Be careful with these ribbon cables. You wanna take your time and place it in place. These tabs here are a guide. Now we can go ahead and put back in our screws. Make sure you use the short ones and not the long ones. You wanna put these screws in tight but you don't wanna over tighten them because you don't wanna crack the board. So just take your time, work your way around. They'll all line up. Now that this board is secure, we wanna go ahead and secure the smaller board here. Now, now for this board here, you wanna make sure you line up the holes in the foot in the corners up here to start and then you'll see where the other holes align they sent us two bags of screws these are the screws you want to use with these because the screws that we took out from the board originally are too long and if you try and screw them back into here they're going to pierce the screen so make sure you use the larger set of screws that come from here once those screws align you'll see where the other screws go and now our boards are tight and secure now we want to go ahead and put on the cover. Once you have the cover on, you can go ahead and replace the screws. You can also use two of the same black screws like you use for the circuit board in the top holes up here. All right, we're almost there. 
The next, the last step is we're going to transfer our SYNC 3 module to here from our old radio. Now that you're done with this, just set it aside carefully so that you don't lose any of the parts that you had here. Now we can take our original factory SYNC 3 module and you want to go ahead and remove the screws. They're just four, they're just Phillips screws that are holding it in place. We want to go ahead and remove this module. Once you're done, you can remove the module and set the old screen aside. You don't need this anymore. So what you want to do is you want to line up these holes with the holes in our SYNC 3 module. The holes don't exactly line up. There was an error in the manufacturing. So what you want to do is you want to catch one hole here and then you can catch the other two holes on this side. The important thing is you want this antenna facing to the top of the unit. With that, we're pretty much done. We want to go into the car. There's only one thing we have to do is we need to connect our APIM extension cable from here to here. And that's the only thing we really need to connect right now before we go into the car. What we want to do is we want to put our orange, our purple side in here to hear it snap in place. And then you want to put the orange side on this side till it snaps into place. Once we have that installed, we can go ahead now and we can move to the truck and start putting everything back in. You want to grab your buttons. Don't put, don't put the buttons in yet. You want to put them in once you're inside the car and I'll tell you exactly why and what my train of thought is. All right, so before we continue, now we're back in the truck. Before I bring the radio in, there are a few things we want to put in place so that when we have our radio, we can start wiring everything up. So there's some stuff that we want to put behind the dash. Now listen, if you want to use your 4G LTE antennas, for this radio, you're gonna to have to put them behind the dash. According to AutoTech Pro, all you need to do is hide it behind the dash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snake one back from here behind the glove box and mount it somewhere behind the dash up here. And I'm gonna repeat the step on the other side as well. I'm gonna go by the steering wheel underneath the dash and come up through here and mount it somewhere over there. You also want to snake your USB outlets. I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna put them in the glove compartment, but later on I'll probably transfer them and see if I can move them to the center console. But for now, uh, I'm gonna put this through the glove compartment and we're gonna mount the one, the GPS unit that comes from Auto Tech Pro. We're gonna mount it up somewhere back behind here. It doesn't really matter where you put it, you just wanna put it somewhere flat. You just wanna peel off the adhesive and place it back there and stick it onto something flat. And then you can coil up the wires and tuck them away behind the dash just so that you don't have a bunch of wires. Now we can go ahead and pass the USBs through. All you got to do is open your glove compartment. There are two tabs on the side. You just pull them down and you'll have a hole on the side of your glove compartment that you can just push the wires up and through to the other side. So now you have your USBs. And I'm going to do the same thing with the SIM card tray. I'm going to use my SIM card tray and I'm going to leave it in the glove compartment area here. In case I want to add a SIM card later on, I'm just going to feed it through and leave it down here. And last but not least, we're going to run our 4G LTE antennas. I'm going to do one on this side and then I'll show you where I snake it towards the end. And I'm going to put one on the other side as well. All right, so now we have our 4G antenna, our aftermarket GPS, our SIM card, sorry, our aftermarket GPS, our SIM card, and our USBs run to our glove compartment. Now it's time to bring the radio in and start putting everything back together. All right, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get our wiring harness um, ready. Uh, what you wanna do is connect your CAN bus here Plug it in, make sure you get it, make sure you get a nice click to make sure it's seated properly. Check your pins to make sure nothing is bent. Once you're good to go, slide it in, you get a nice tight connection. Okay, once you have that done, the next thing you want to do is you want to, you want to connect your factory sync plug to here. It should only slide in one way. Push it in until it clips in. Once that's in, you got that out the way. Once you have that connected, we're going to start putting in our radio and we're going to work with the ones that have the most slack. Now we can take our screen and start connecting things up. Now let's go ahead and start plugging all our wires in. 
Let's connect our wire from our radio harness and it goes in nice and snug. I like to work with the ones on the bottom because they're harder to get in and out. So we'll go ahead and we put that one in first. Then we can go ahead and put in our USB. These only go in one direction and they only fit one way. So if it's too hard, then you know you're putting it in the wrong direction. We already have our LVDS cable connected. So we're good there. Next, we can put in, our another, put in our other connector from our main wiring harness. And it clicks in, make sure it's tight. Next, we'll put in our SIM card cable. Again, make sure it's clicked in nice and tight. And then last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and put in our auxiliary audio cables. We may not need this, but I'm gonna go ahead and connect it anyway. Again, you want to push it in tight and make sure it clicks in. Now we can go ahead and connect our 4G antennas. Let's go ahead and connect our aftermarket GPS. I'm going to connect the shorter cables last. Our factory GPS goes here and our factory USB goes in here. Then you want to connect the main factory harness to the radio. Before you connect it, make sure that you have this tab all the way down. And it should lock in in place. Once you have that connected, you can go ahead and connect your climate controls. You want to get that nice snap in. Climate controls are connected. Lastly, we're going to connect our main USB and our main GPS. All right, let's go ahead and connect our main USB. And our factory GPS. Looks like we have everything connected. We're going to go ahead and put it back temporarily. You just want to slide it back in um, and then we're going to power up the vehicle and make sure everything is functioning and we'll put the buttons in in the top and we'll wrap this thing up once you have your unit pushed in you want to just press it in and the clips will bind in you want to leave your buttons um, the cables protruding here and then you can connect your buttons and then push them in um, before you push them in you want to turn on the system and test them to make sure that everything is working right And once you know everything is working right, you can just push the buttons in and they'll click in. And now to put this thing back together, you just put it back in pretty much reverse order from the way you took them apart. You won't be needing the six screws that connected the faceplate here because obviously the clips are the only thing holding it along with the screws that you're going to put back in the top holes up here. Once you're ready, you can just go ahead and tighten those screws in. You don't want to over tighten it, you just tighten it nice and snug. All right, and our radio is in. Now we can go ahead and put the tray for our speaker back in place. You just want to line up all the tabs. Last but not least, we put in our two screws for our speaker. Last but not least, we put back on the cover plate for the cover for our speaker. Smack it in and that's it pretty much done. Now let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it works. All right, there you go. The boot up time is good. You want to go to console. You can see our original sync three interface here. You want to check that our volume buttons are working. Volume is working fine. Audio is working fine. We want to check our backup camera. Backup camera is working. The doors are working perfectly. We want to check our buttons now to make sure that they're working. The ABS comes on, the traction control button works. Our hazards are working and the 360 camera button works so we're good 
So what we can do now is just go ahead and push our buttons back in. Now our buttons are in, and now we can go ahead and put the blank plate on the other button here. Now our buttons are in, our screen is working fine, and it's working great. All right, we're back in the car now, and I'm gonna run through some of the features of the AutoTech 14.4 inch screen. Now, as you can see here, the screen is going to be a little bit different than when you first get it from factory. I've customized it using Nova Launcher, but you're going to have all the same features here. Uh, as you can see here, I have all my apps installed, Apple Music, Pan, um, Amazon Music, YouTube, Pandora, um, Google Chrome, VLC Media Player. Uh, the unit comes with a thing called console, and this is the most important and coolest feature that I think this unit has the interface as you can see here the original sync features are working the volume on the steering is working the best thing about this I think is that the features remain the same as if you had your factory um, your factory radio so things like if you have your ambient lighting all of those remain and you can see it's very responsive. You can adjust your display, your vehicle preferences, all that stuff. And actually, if you have wired Apple CarPlay and you don't want to use the CarPlay from the new unit, you can still plug in and use your Apple CarPlay on the system itself here. That will free up your Wi-Fi for using your tablet. You go to your audio, you have your same radios as you, the radio channels as usual. You can do the presets. Everything remains the same. Your sources, you still have all your sources. Your Sirius XM, if you have XM radio, stays the same um, and it works just fine. Bluetooth works the same as if you were connected to your factory 8 inch radio. That to me is the most important part. Again, your reverse camera works like if you had it in your original system, it works perfectly. Um, let me see what else that I can say. Oh, the AC controls, it works both with the buttons here or you can use the touch screen to control your fan speed and change your various temperature settings all of your, on your radio, all from the screen here or you can use the buttons as well. That's one of the things that I loved about it. Retained all the factory stuff but has Android running on top. As you can see, if you go here, um, I've paired Apple CarPlay and it connects to my CarPlay and it's wireless. So you get to have your phone hands-free. You don't have to touch anything. It's all controlled here. Um, wireless CarPlay works just as usual. Another one of the features that I have that I liked about mine is uh, you can see up here I've installed a SIM card so I can actually use the apps on here and go to the Play Store and download them without having a Wi-Fi connection. I just use my SIM card and I can watch YouTube or whatever, I whatever else you want. I don't suggest doing that but you have the capabilities. Um, the settings work just like an Android so if you're familiar with an Android this runs Android on here so you can change the settings. Um, and sideload apps and do all the different things you could do with any Android tablet or Android phone. So yeah, by the way, if you guys found this helpful and you like the content, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that like button. And if you're so inclined, subscribe to the channel for more DIY tips and tricks. I cover a bunch of different DIY things. This was just another one of the projects that I decided to embark on. Let me jump into Google Maps. Google Maps works fine. You can use this on the go. And now you don't have to worry about having your phone connected. You have Google Maps all built into the screen right here. And the interface looks amazing. It's huge. The screen is responsive. All the apps work well. They don't, there's no lag. There's no glitching. It's not, there's no delay. Everything runs smooth. And the transitions are great. So yeah, as I said, this is Nova Launcher. So mine looks a little bit different. And you can customize this any way you want. Other than that, I love it. And hopefully you guys might 
this might convince you guys to jump in and purchase one of these things so far i've had no issues everything works fine everything works flawlessly and i have no complaints Leave a comment below if there's anything you want to see specific or if there are any questions that you may have about this unit. I'll be glad to answer them if I can. Um, apart from that, thank you guys for watching again and I'll catch you guys in the next video.